Mated by Mistake Written by N. Chandra Narrated by Celia Stone Prologue Rosalie Why are you torturing me like this? I sobbed as I clutched his collar. His eyes returned my stare, cold and soulless. Once upon a time, they were so full of love. But today, they were like black ponds in the middle of nowhere. This can't possibly be true. Was I having a bad dream? Would I ever be able to wake up from this agonizing nightmare? Rosalie, I'm sorry, but I, I'm unable to accept you as my mate. You are aware that I had no choice in this case. I have to follow the advice of the council. Chris's voice. His voice deep and husky. That voice always made my heart race. But tonight, it made me shudder with despair. But I'm your buddy. What criteria does the council use to choose your mate? It's me, you know? Your wolf recognizes me. I tried to argue with myself. I wiped away the tears that refused to go away. I was well aware of the rules. An alpha could only be mated to another alpha or a high-ranking beta if the situation demanded it. I am an Amiga. Despite the fact that my father had been upgraded to a beta, he was born an Amiga, as was I. The pack had severe restrictions. I was the pack's fastest wolf, capable of taking down multiple male betas. Despite the fact that my efforts were in vain, I clung to optimism. Everything was gone in the blink of an eye. Those memories, those wonderful hopes and dreams. It was all a bit strange. My mate had decided to leave me. He was going to turn me down. Chris locked his gaze on me. His eyes glowed with the tiniest trace of emotion. As he probed my psyche, his lovely face relaxed a little. Stop attempting to read my mind, I screamed. Rosie, I'm not reading your mind. I'm only trying to console you, he muttered. He approached me, and I took a step back to maintain our gap. I was adamant about not allowing myself to be touched by him. It was too much for me. Please don't come near me. Please don't complicate things any further. I was enraged, hurt, and betrayed. And don't ever call me that again. He drew a snarl from me. I still love you, he said quietly his voice tinged with sadness and need. He took a step forwards and hugged me. I didn't have the strength to fight him any longer. I cried as I put my head on his wide chest. He encircled me with his massive arms and held me securely. Rosie, I will always love you, but not in the way you wish. I'm afraid I won't be able to accept you as a companion. I'd have to say no to you. Please accept my apologies, he muttered. My wolf had no choice but to submit to the alpha. I couldn't stand up to him. I would have to accept his rejection if he were to reject me. I didn't have a choice, even if it shattered my heart or made me cry. I felt his kisses on my temple, then on my forehead. He was smothering me in little kisses. His lips had reached my cheeks and his hand had snaked around in my hair. Just as he reached my lips, he began kissing them. I reacted with a jerk. No! I screamed as I slammed my hands against his chest and pushed hard. He was a little taken aback and surprised. He began to say, Rosie, no, we are no longer mates and I am no longer yours. Chris Reynolds, you are not allowed to touch me. I took a step back, almost reaching the valley's edge. It was our go-to hangout spot. I was the alpha's mate, but no one else in the pack knew. He requested that I keep it a secret from everyone. Melissa thought I was naive and foolish, but I had faith in him. I'm... Sorry if I hurt you, Rosie. You have already done enough, my Alpha. It is over. Alpha Chris, I accept your rejection. You are no longer mine. I bowed. His dark eyes were fixed on me, as if he hadn't expected such a reaction. I took off running, not looking back. I sprang into the valley and dashed into the woods. As I transformed into my silver white wolf, my garments tore and scattered. I ran all the way to the top of the highest cliff, and howled into the darkness. 2. Rosalie Murdoch Rosalie Murdoch, 15, opened her eyes as the late afternoon sun filtered through the car window. She sighed and rubbed her eyes, realising that her nap had been insufficient. She checked her phone. It was 2.30pm on a Saturday afternoon, and they'd been driving for six hours. She sat up and stretched, her muscles tense from the uncomfortable sleeping position. Can you tell me where we are, Mum? 
In about 20 minutes, we'll arrive. Dear, you need to wake up and take care of yourself. Your hair is an absolute disaster. Rosalie's mother returned her gaze, a smile on her face. Amelia Murdoch was a lovely lady. She had angular facial features and long blonde hair that hung straight to the middle of her back, matching her pale complexion. She had the body of a 25-year-old at the age of 35. She didn't look a day older than 25. Being a werewolf was a boon to the skin. We'll be there in half an hour or so, Scott reminded his daughter. They were returning from a much-needed vacation. Scott Murdoch, the newly promoted beta of the Silver Moon Pack, was a commanding figure even behind the wheel. His six-foot frame barely fit in the driver's seat, and he weighed 240 pounds of solid muscle and bone. His light brown hair was styled in a flat top. Yes, Dad, we've gotten over it. We're going to the coronation of the new Alpha, Rosalie stated. She didn't want to return so soon. However, the ceremony was critical for the pack. The Alpha Sullivan had died unexpectedly, leaving 18-year-old Chris as the heir. Rosalie had a dreamy expression on her face as she thought about Chris, who was adorable. He was the heartthrob of all the girls. She was curious as to who would be his mate. Rosalie was only 15 years old, and it would take her three years longer to find her mate. All ceremonies required the presence of unmated sons and daughters of alphas and betas. They were so few in number that mating was critical to their survival. Alpha Sullivan was a good man who was about to die. He had leukemia of the blood. It's uncommon among werewolves, but it does happen from time to time. Since the age of 15, Chris had been groomed to take over as Alpha. It's unfortunate that Alpha Sullivan passed away while we were gone. Amelia wiped her tear-stained eyes. Sure, but it was to be expected. He was in pain. May Luna bestow her blessings upon his soul. Scott prayed quietly to God. For a 15-year-old Rosalie, funerals were a boring affair. She was looking forward to spending time with her best friend, Melissa. Rosalie crouched low, her gaze fixed on her prey, leaping and lunging with her fingers spread wide. Melissa, her best friend, screamed in surprise as they rolled down the slope and into a pool of mud. They laughed and splashed mud at each other as if it were any other day at the estate. It was a few hours before the ceremony. They decided to play because they were bored. Oh my God, my mother is going to murder me, Rosalie bemoaned, her dress ruined. Don't worry, we can go to my place. You can borrow one of my dresses, Melissa suggested. They were unaware that they were being watched from a distance by a pair of eyes. Can you tell me who they are, Jasper? Chris Reynolds, 18 years old, inquired, his gaze following the muddy, giggling girls walking away. Jasper examined the girls with a critical eye. Rosalie and Melissa? Rosalie is Beta Scott's daughter and Melissa is George's daughter. They are very mischievous girls who are constantly up to no good. He responded with a disapproving shake of his head. You won't believe it. They broke the fountain on the front lawn while playing chase. Those girls are a menace. Chris let out a loud snort. They appear to be harmless. Oh, they're harmless enough. They're just mischievous. With a broad grin, Jasper stated, You must focus on your coronation today. You look so much like your father. I still remember when he was preparing for his coronation. Jasper spoke with pride in his voice. He'd be overjoyed with you, Chris. Chris let out a long sigh. I hope I can lead the pack like him. I miss him. We all do. Jasper gave a slight nod. Amelia had received the shock of her life when she discovered her muddy daughter and her equally soiled friend running around in the garden. She dragged Rosalie away quickly and pushed her into the bathroom. Rosalie, what am I going to do with you? As she removed her daughter's muddy, torn dress, she inquired. She turned the tub's faucet on. Go wash yourself, it's coronation day, and you've been running around in the mud, ruining your dress. We'll be late for the ceremony if we don't hurry, her mother said as she picked up the filthy dress and tossed it in the trash. Her rage was palpable. Rosalie pouted as her mother locked her inside the bathroom. She wouldn't be free until she'd cleaned herself up. She focused her gaze on the warm water in the bathtub. Who wants to go to that boring ceremony anyway? She grumbled but she was soon splashing happily in the bathtub to avoid her mother's wrath. Rosalie Murdoch, don't waste your time playing. Rosalie pouted as her mother screamed again. Your father was recently promoted. 
But this girl is shameless. What do you think Alpha Chris would think of our family? Her mother sighed. Rosalie despised being disciplined by her mother, but she was correct. What would Chris think? Rosalie was in a state of shock. I hope he didn't notice me playing in the mud, she reasoned. Rosalie grabbed a bottle of shampoo, poured some onto her palm, and began lathering it up on her hair. As she began to soap her body with sweet, fragrant soap, she thought, this sucks, but I need to put on a good show for Chris. Rosalie stood there watching as her mother finished her makeup. I'm not a Barbie doll, mum, she said, cringing as she touched the silk material of her hideous pink gown. Nonsense, Rosalie, her mother responded, applying lip gloss to her full lips. She took a moment to admire her in the mirror, pleased with the outcome. She looked at her daughter as she turned around. Rosie, you look stunning tonight. Rosalie smirked. Mum, I'm going outside to get some fresh air, she said, not waiting for her mother to respond. Rosalie pushed open the door and trotted down the corridor in her high heels, passing several members of the pack. Tonight, they were joking and laughing about the coronation. In their penguin suits and long, slinky dresses in various colours, they looked stunning. Rosalie wished she could put on one of those lovely gowns instead of this dreadful, pooky frock, but she lacked both the physique and the poise to carry it. She was a child, after all. She ran down the grand marble staircase, past the hallway, her heels clinking loudly, she shuddered in embarrassment, but ignored it as the overwhelming sense of being watched began to cause her anxiety. She was well aware that she was not as attractive as the older female wolves. They had full bouncy breasts and perfect curves. She wondered if she would be ever able to achieve such flawless beauty. She pushed open the main door and took a few steps down. Her heels bothered her, but she kept walking until she arrived at the spot where she felt at ease. She walked right into the woods. It was dark in the forest. The last rays of sunlight did nothing to illuminate the dense foliage. Rosalie, on the other hand, could see clearly both during the day and at night. A normal person would have scurried around like a blind mouse, waiting to be scooped up by a hungry owl. Her enhanced werewolf senses, on the other hand, made it easy for her to walk in the dark. She took off running, feeling the wind on her face, but a stray tree root caused her to lose her footing and fall to the ground, landing on her face. She groaned and lay motionless on the ground for a moment, before straightening up and brushing dirt off her expensive dress. She was shocked when she realised she had ripped the hem. Mum's going to kill me, she worriedly thought, as she examined the ripped hem of her dress. She let out a long sigh. She sat down on a fallen tree, thinking, I'd rather run in my wolf form than dress up like a Barbie doll. She inhaled and exhaled deeply. It felt good, and the air around her was cool. 3. Alex Grayson Hey, Rosalie. I heard Peter and a group of boys talking about going for a run in the woods. When Rosalie bumped into Melissa in the corridor, she said, So? Rosalie inquired. Let's go see what they're up to. Why? I'm not interested in anything those knuckleheads intend to do. I heard they're going to drink. Melissa made a sly remark. Really? Rosalie's pupils dilated. Her interest was piqued. If I leave now, Mum will murder me. Rosalie sighed and frowned. She's still mad at me for being dirty. And if she sees us together, she'll be furious. She was about to lose it. I'll go first, and you can follow me after a while. Melissa made a suggestion. All right, Rosalie responded. Rosalie felt her wolf take over as she kicked off her heels near a fallen tree. She couldn't shift without being supervised. Because the juvenile wolves were prone to losing control, they were not allowed to shift on their own unless accompanied by responsible adults. Rosalie, on the other hand, had greater speed and awareness as a wolf than the typical human. She took another deep breath to calm down before sprinting into the woods in her human form. It wasn't as fast as being in her wolf form, but it was just as satisfying. As she dashed through the forest, she could feel the thin branches and dead withering leaves crush beneath her feet. She adored the sensation of cool air on her skin. She could hear the waterfall from afar. It was her hidden hideaway. She took a step back and climbed a boulder. The stream was pouring into a lovely tiny waterfall, which she could see. Melissa had vanished, and she had no idea where she was. She took a step back before leaping high into the air, ripping her dress once more. She muttered a curse. What was she thinking? I've already been grounded. 
She landed on the other side of the stream after flying across it. As she landed on another body, she gasped in disbelief. He was sitting on the boulder she had just hopped on, cross-legged. As she collided with him, she let out a scream. Their limbs intertwined as they plummeted into the creek. What were you thinking? As they resurfaced, breaking the water, a male voice bellowed. He growled. Have you lost your mind? Before finally realising who had jumped on him. Can you tell me who you are? Rosalie locked her gaze on the stranger, who appeared to be between the ages of 21 and 22. He stood a foot higher than her. His physique was all muscles, and his dark hair was dripping with water as it poured down in rivulets over his chiselled, handsome face. His green eyes glimmered with rage. Her wolf huddled inside. You want to know who I am in our territory, right? What the hell are you doing here? She said it all at once. Strangers were something her mother had cautioned her about. Should I alert the pack? She pondered. Aren't you ever tired of being so hyperactive? He asked, disapprovingly clicking his tongue. What do you think a little girl like you is doing in this place? You didn't answer my question. Who are you? What are you doing in the Silver Moon Pack area? She asked stubbornly. He grimaced, then softened his expression. The young child was frail and it was pointless to scare her. My name is Alex Grayson, and I'm an alpha of the Greystone Pack. I've come to your alpha's coronation because he invited me. So, if you're worried about alerting everyone about an intrusion, don't be. I have no desire to take over this dump. He shrugged his shoulders. Oh! Her mouth opened wide in amazement. she just leapt on and insulted a visiting alpha. The pack had invited a number of significant people, including members of the council and numerous pack leaders. Alex Grayson was a magnificent alpha, and his pack was powerful and formidable. And he was staring at her right now. She thought to herself, Mum is going to kill me. I was just running. I didn't know you were here. I'm sorry, she said defensively, and started to move out of the stream. Whoops! She tripped on a rock and dragged him along in the water. But he was cautious about it. He snatched her arm and dragged her to her feet. You're a calamity. Take care of your slick feet. He shook his head, frustrated, and began to pull himself out of the water. She grumbled but began to follow him. And just as she was about to slip for the third time, he swooped in and saved her by grabbing her tiny waist. Thanks, she muttered as she got out from the stream without even looking at him. I need to go back and change. I've ruined the second dress today. Mum spent hours looking for it online. She sighed, but then she finally realised why was he here. He should have been in the hall with other guests. What are you doing here all by yourself, Alpha Alex? Isn't it true that you're supposed to be with the other visitors? He was not moving. He was frozen at the spot, staring intently at her. She frowned. Alpha Alex? She inquired. Do you think you're all right? She grabbed his wrist and urged him to go. He refused to budge. Oh my goodness, I've turned you into a popsicle she shouted, rubbing her hands together in an attempt to thaw his. Oh dear, did you get hypothermia? Please, don't die. He gently moved her away from him. As he got out of the stream, he muttered hoarsely, I'm all right. I guess I should leave, he began, then paused as if pondering a question. Can you tell me your name? I'm Rosalie Murdoch. Wait, she stopped him. You didn't tell me what you were doing here alone. She asked him curiously, but then she bit her lips because she thought she was over the line for questioning an alpha. I'm sorry, she promptly apologised. No, it's fine, he replied abruptly. He needed to leave, but he figured he could talk to her for a few minutes, the girl who made his heart skip a beat in an oddly pleasant way. I was thinking about stuff, he paused. If I could lead my pack just like my father did, I'm worried that I might disappoint my pack leaders. You'll do fine, she said confidently. You know, my dad says, we should not worry about the result. You should put in our best efforts into our work and leave the rest to fate. If something must happen, it will happen. If you're honest in your efforts, I'm sure you'll be the best alpha they ever had. She smiled at him widely. Her whole body was drenched. Her teeth chattered. His gorgeous face lit up with a grin. Your father is a guy of great wisdom. Thank you for your kind words. He turned and looked at her. He finally noticed the torn and sad fate of her dress. When your mum finds out you're a problem, she'll be furious, he hesitated. Yeah, I was already grounded. 
she admitted sadly. Come with me. I'm sure Sarah, my sister, will be able to find you something. She gave him a cheerful look. Thank you, she murmured, blushing. He instantly realized how much he enjoyed seeing her flush. Let's go then. The coronation's about to start, he said, smiling again as he extended his hand to her like a gentleman inviting a girl to dance. Rosalie sashayed around in her new sleeveless baby pink and blue dress. Amelia looked at her with a puzzled expression. Rosie, where did you obtain this dress? I, um, Melissa gave it to me, she explained casually, indicating that she wasn't completely lying. She didn't want her mother to find out that she had nearly ruined the pricey dress. Amelia, her father whispered as he put his hand behind his mate's back. We have to leave right now, he added as he ushered them into the chamber where the other wolves were being seated. They sat in the same room as the other baiters and their families. For them, it was a proud moment. 4. The Confession Melissa snatched Rosalie's hand and drew her focus away from the audience to the stage. The coronation ceremony is about to begin. She then walked across to the other side of the stage. That's Alfred Grayson, and he's just stunning. But why is he looking at us? Do you believe he has a thing for me? Melissa couldn't stop herself from gushing. Rosalie snorted and said, You think too highly of yourself. Why would he like us? He's an alpha, and much older than us, but he is nice. While primping her skirt, Rosalie muttered. Alex was indeed glancing in their direction with an amused smile on his face. On a platform that was approximately one foot above the ground, Chris Reynolds kneeled. One of the four councilmen stood in front of him, holding an open scroll with an archaic appearance. Chris had a golden goblet in his hand, which he held at eye level. The silvery moonlight from the open round ceiling above him flowed over him, cleansing him with its sanctifying power. The assembly was deafeningly quiet as the council member poured a reddish golden liquid into a cup in front of them. Rosalie took a whiff of the air but couldn't make out what kind of scent it had. He began to recite the ancient words. The holy moon keeps a watchful eye on us, defends us, provides for us, and ultimately saves us. When the holy moon chooses her troops, she is also choosing her saviour of peace. His voice was hushed as he continued. Do thee, Christopher William Reynolds, son of Sullivan William Reynolds, assume thine proper place as the Alpha of Silverstone? The sacred moon picks our leader and places thy fate in the blood that flows through thy veins. After a few seconds, Chris's voice became audible. I, Christopher William Reynolds, swear by the Luna and by drinking of this blessed wine to be the Alpha of the Silver Moon Pack. He said this while drinking from the goblet in one go. The members of the pack howled in their wolf forms, bowing their heads on their front paws, and then rolled over to expose their bellies in a display of submission. The coronation ceremony was brief, but the night was still young, because there was still the feast to be enjoyed. Rosalie and Melissa were cramming their faces with the selection of tidbits that had been prepared for the gathering. Because their mothers had issued a firm warning to keep out of trouble, they were following through on that directive, sitting peacefully and enjoying a meal. Melissa said, eyeing Chris wistfully. I wonder which lucky girl would be his mate. Maybe we should flirt with him. We might bag us an alpha, Melissa chirped. Melissa, you're so disgusting. We can't flirt with the alpha. Rosalie admonished her, because she didn't like anyone flirting with Chris. When she saw Chris with other women, she felt a strange sense of jealousy in her. Right now, he was sitting with Lisa, the daughter of Hanlon Pack Alpha Richard Dawson, he was also a member of the council, making him an incredibly influential individual. However, Lisa was insufferable. Rosalie dreaded the day if she became their next Luna. He's 18 already. Do you think they're mates? Melissa asked. How would I know? He's not revealed his mate yet. We don't know if he's found out yet, but I hope it's not Lisa. Rosalie whispered conspiratorially. Of course, that would be a disaster, Melissa replied. Rosalie saw Chris and Lisa from behind a throng of people, her gaze fixed on them. He frequently hung out with his buddies, participating in hip young adult activities that Rosalie was not permitted to participate in. With him being the new alpha, all the females lavished him with attention. 
Why is it that every time we try to hang out with you, that annoying Omega is always there? Rosalie froze. Lisa was referring to her. Was it that apparent? Well, there's nothing I can do to make her stop. Besides, you follow me around too, and I don't complain. Chris shrugged. Well, that's not the same, and you know it. She sniffed, then pouted prettily, leaning on Chris's shoulder. I'm your girl, aren't I? We're supposed to be seen together. Chris let out a low growl, and Lisa looked up surprised as she bit his lower lip. It's none of your business what my pack members do. You will not speak ill of anyone from my pack again. His blatant snub to Lisa, as well as his defense of her following him around, made Rosalie's heart leap with pride. Chris shrugged and sipped his iced tea. Lisa's face clouded a little at the non-committing gesture, but she smoothed it back out and said, Well, I won't approve of it in future when we're mated. First of all, Lisa, I never intimated that we were getting mated. So who follows me about shouldn't be of interest to you, Chris stated with a twisted expression. Rosalie could have jumped for joy knowing that she did not have to deal with the cruel and nervous Lisa for the rest of her life. Deciding that there was no reason to spy around, she decided to leave. She turned around and ran off towards her house, not looking back at the chaos that ensued after Chris's rebuke. Lisa threw a royal tantrum and had to be carried off by her friends. If Rosalie would have turned back, she would have seen both of Lisa's friends holding onto her, Chris's friends rolling on the ground, struggling to control his laughter. Rosalie! As she ran towards her house, Chris called after her. Rosalie came to a complete stop and turned to face her alpha. She was taken aback because he had never spoken to her in private before. As he approached her, Chris exclaimed, You look incredibly gorgeous, as always. Rosalie blushed and said thanks, oblivious to the fact that he was beaming at her. When he took her hand, she gasped a little and gazed up at him, wide-eyed. I have something I need to share with you. He came to a hold and turned aside, freeing her hands. You're my mate. Her hand went to her mouth as she looked down and gently shook her head. She slumped against the tree, stroking her temples, unable to grasp what had happened. How? I mean, I'm an Omeka and you're the Alpha. The council won't allow it, Rosalie said in shock. When you're 18, you'll know. I knew the day I turned 18. My wolf is aware, but I was only waiting for the appropriate moment. He laughed defeatedly as he ran his hand over his sandy brown curls, which popped back into place. I didn't want to tell you yet, to be honest. It's going to be difficult. I wanted to kill everyone one day when I overheard some of the guys talking about how adorable you were getting and how hot you'd be when you were older. That day, I was so close to hurting you, she said with a shake of her head. I don't get it. No one has ever told me I'm cute or even shown that they're interested in me. None of your buddies, in particular. I told them all to stay away from you, to keep them from approaching you whenever they showed interest in you. He smirked briefly before becoming solemn and saying, I don't expect you to return my feelings now, but I am going to wait till you turn 18. You will know when you reach 18. I don't want you to feel obligated to respond just so you don't hurt my feelings, and I'm not a pedophile, so we're not going any further than being friends right now, okay? She gave him a quick glance before nodding and sighed deeply, attempting to digest everything that had just happened. Even though she was 15, she knew he was correct. She wasn't that immature. She knew exactly what he wanted, and everything he said made sense. This added information was confusing her, and even though she tried, she could not seem to keep up with it. She was content to wait and see what her feelings would settle into with this new development. She always had a crush on him, but being mates was completely different. Besides, alphas only mated with other alphas or betas. She was not a beta yet. She had no idea how the future would unfold. 5. The Rejection Three years later, Chris Reynolds, the 22-year-old alpha of the Silver Moon Pack, stood in front of the council, his gaze fixed on them. In the beginning, there were multiple werewolf packs in North America. However, after the horrific conflict, only 10 packs survived and came to an agreement. In order to bring about peace, they convened a council, which devised a peace accord and oversaw its implementation. It also had control over the mating of the alphas in order to ensure the packs received the most advantage from the mating. Alpha Chris, 
Do you accept Grace Anderson of the Blue Moon, daughter of Alpha Frank Anderson, as your mate? The Grey Council member asked. Chris bowed his head for a second. His wolf was still not ready, but he had little choice because the Blue Moon pack was an immensely powerful one. Aside from that, the land and business contracts that Frank had pledged in exchange for his daughter's hand in marriage would bring riches to the pack. What about our mate? His wolf inquired. Rosalie had just celebrated her 18th birthday. He'd been seeing her in secret for the previous three years. As promised, they were not mated, but Chris's wolf was eager to claim her when he was unexpectedly summoned by the council and offered to mate with Grace Anderson, who had graciously accepted the offer. I accept, Chris stated out loud, indicating his agreement. The members of the council nodded in agreement. Your marriage will be consummated with Grace Anderson in a week's time, on the night of the full moon. May the goddess Luna bless this union. What? Are you planning on mating with Grace Anderson? So how about us? They were standing near the waterfall when Rosalie yelled. They used to meet at this location, swam in the brook and went rabbit hunting. Chris had claimed her as his mate, and she'd been waiting for that day. It never arrived. I'm sorry, Rosalie, but I can't overrule the council's decision, he remarked sadly. So you're rejecting me? Rosalie enragedly inquired. It's not like that, Rosalie. I am the Alpha. I must take care of my pack and take the best possible decision. Grace Anderson would be a good Luna. Without glancing at her, he said softly. So this is your opinion of me? I'm not good enough. Only an Omega, she screamed. Rosalie, it's not like that. I adore you. Put a stop to it. Just put an end to it. You're no longer mine, she mumbled. You're no longer mine. Rosalie dashed into the woods as quickly as her legs would allow. She had heard that your mate's rejection was painful, but the sting of rejection stabbed her so deeply that all she could think about was getting away before collapsing in pain and crying herself into a mess. She dashed through the dimly illuminated expanse in the dark, only to realise too late that she had strayed too far into the woods. God damn it, she cursed in frustration, unable to even think of the anguish and humiliation that would involve her going back. A few more drops slid down her face, and she struggled with her beast as it tried to exert control and take over her form. Several thoughts were rushing through her head, and she could barely think, but she knew she could just not walk away from the pack, her family. This was all she had. Rosalie slammed her fist into a tree, barely seeing how it bowed as a result of her assault. She finally relinquished control to the animal that had been clawing at her in misery, attempting to take over and ripping her body apart. Her white wolf had emerged from the woods, howling a forlorn howl into the air. When the animal approached the pack's woods, her immediate inclination was to flee. She'd assumed that allowing the wolf to take control would ease the pain that had tortured her body, but she was mistaken. With every snarl and subsequent whimper, her wolf cried. She felt all the pain and rage of a wounded beast. He isn't interested in us. The realisation that the one man who was destined to love her, the one man who was chosen for her, did not want her, tore through her. She remembered the grief distorting the brilliance of his eyes. It was too much for her, and she tried to flee from the pain, but it swamped her, impaling her from every angle until she screamed in agony, and the wolf stopped running to let out a heartbreaking pain field howl. Was the animal feeling the same loss she felt at Chris rejecting her so harshly? Did the wolf understand what it all meant? Or was it the loss of the chance to mate that hurt the beast? We are his, but he has abandoned us, she reflected. No, no, perhaps he doesn't realise what it really means. Possibly he, whispered the wolf. He considers us to be beneath him. He's turned us down. The thought cut her off. She tried to reason her way through the fog of anguish in her head, but additional emotions pierced her. Anger, despair, and loneliness all battled in her mind as she struggled to combat them. We should force him to mate. He's ours, exclaimed her wolf. What? No, that's not right. You can't do it. You can't do it. She fought through the haze of emotions, even as she felt her consciousness start to slip. Her control over the wolf diminished, and it seemed to want to violate their pact, considering doing something as impractical as forcing a mating with the Alpha. Rosalie panicked as she felt the vestiges of insanity began to crawl into her thoughts, and she tried to wrest control back from the wolf in futility. She could not shift back to her human form, and the wolf walked in circles, growling and snarling as it completely overwhelmed her senses. 
something dark and empty started to engulf her, slowly corrupting her and overwhelming every emotion she felt now. No, no, she tried to scream, still trying to take back control of her form, but she did not shift back. Please, please don't, she sobbed in desperation, before she lost all awareness.